Hi viewers! To help you save money, today at Handy Dandy Husband, we will be showing you how to replace the front disc pads and the rotors, as well as the hardware, on your 2000 Saturn SL2. Now, this may also be applicable to other vehicles or model years. Stay tuned until the very end, however, and I will show you how to receive a free downloadable PDF of all the tools and instructions in this video. Alright, you'll need a hose and a sprayer, uh, some brass bristles uh, that can attach to a drill so you can use them to clean any items that are rusted, torque wrenches, a hammer, a pick to reposition the brake pads if necessary, a small screwdriver flathead, a large screwdriver flathead, some adapters for your drill in case you need them, a string or a rod to hold the caliper, uh, some sort of device to hold any brake fluid that might drip out, um, this is a brake bleeding set, a gauge to check the size or the thickness of the brake pads, a little bit of a crayon, some socket wrenches, a large C-clamp, a size 10 if you're going to be opening the brake bleeder, a size 14 socket and a size 18 socket. Again, light soapy water, um, thread locker, a short pry bar, a breaker bar. Uh, this is a flexible head flashlight that I like using because it's magnetized on the bottom. Um, some silicone paste, some anti-seize lubricant, brake clean, brushes, I've got uh, brass, stainless steel, and nylon brushes, as well as regular used toothbrushes here. And if you recall, I did create a video on how I made this angled toothbrush. Glasses, a dust mask, and some people use penetrating oils. What I do is make my own penetrating oil, and this is 50% uh, brake fluid that's been used or uh, that's gone bad because it was open for too long and 50% uh, acetone or nail polish fluid. I just raided my wife's uh, supply for that. And I just put it in a glass bottle and I use a, uh, a small dropper to put it into the, uh, onto the uh, nuts that need to be opened. Some rags. And here there's two shallow uh, water or um, liquid catchers. And there's a link in the description below on how to create these. Okay, the first step is to make sure that you clean as much of the area that you're going to be working on uh, before you start working on it because brake dust is hazardous. So what I would recommend is taking off the hubcap and then spraying both the uh, inside of the um, uh, tire area as well as the rear side. We'll do that now. And I just took a 19 millimeter or 3 quarter inch uh, socket and I'm just using my hand to open it. These are not really um, tightened on really tightly. Okay, we've uh, removed the hubcaps on both sides, and now we're just going to rinse it out. You can tell as we get in, there's a lot of brake dust. And this is just going to help us have a cleaner area to work with. All right, the first step that you would do is, as I said, wash the entire area uh, so that there's uh, minimal brake dust. The second step is while the vehicle is uh, still on the ground, uh, loosen the uh, lug nuts for the wheel. Now I've already done that and I've lifted the vehicle up. Now. For your information, I did do another video on the lifting and jacking points for the Saturn SL2. Uh, please uh, see the description below for uh, that video. And now that uh, the vehicle is raised and the lug nuts are loose, I am now going to uh, turn the wheel in the, in the outward direction so that I can have better access to the caliper. I'll do that now. Okay, we're just going to remove the lug nuts now. We move the tire.
and the drill makes things a lot faster. Just take the wheel off. And as a safety precaution, I like putting the wheel underneath the vehicle. And the first step is to take a picture of uh, the area that you're going to work on so that this um, brake hose here can be positioned in the exact same position that you took it out in. All right, uh, before we take a picture of the area that we're going to work on, I'm just going to soap it down with soapy water. As you can see here, I did uh, place the magnetic uh, flexible head flashlight uh, onto the strut. And that just helps give me a very uh, good idea of what I'm working on without having uh, one hand occupied with the flashlight. So let's just spray this down. Okay, and now that I've sprayed it down with soapy water, I'm just gonna gently brush these boots because this will enhance their flexibility later on. And I do not wanna brush this with a hard nylon brush. I'm just using an old soft toothbrush to do that, as well as the cap for the bleeder valve. All right, so the next step is uh, to reduce the amount of friction that the caliper is putting onto the disc uh, or, or the rotor. And uh, what I'm going to be doing is um, putting a pry bar into this area and just prying this caliper uh, so that the piston uh, is closed down a little bit. So I'm just going to use a 14 millimeter socket on a breaker bar and release the uh, caliper bolts. That's open. That's open. Just quickly remove them. Okay, just taking out the pins. They're not corroded, fairly clean. But I will uh, use a uh, brass brush just on the threads here and on the tip. I've got a clean rag just to save them. Now, it's important to note that this one is a different diameter than the lower one. Just remember the thicker diameter one goes on the top. All right, I'm just gonna Lift this up and, and notice the angle of the brake line. This has to be replaced in the exact same um, position, otherwise this might get kinked. All right. And just watch for the boots there. They're on fairly ruggedly. And we're just gonna hang this up here. Alright, so I've taken the caliper off and I'm just gonna remove the pads. And as you can tell, the pads are worn, uh, but not to not to the, the indicator levels. They come out pretty easy. They're not rusted in, in position. Okay, just gonna take the, the hardware off. The hardware is quite dirty and rusted. We'll be replacing that. All right, so now that I've removed the caliper and I've taken off the hardware for the brake pads, I will be taking off the uh, caliper bracket and when I remove the caliper bracket that will give me easy access to the notches where the hardware sits and I'll be able to easily 
uh, clean those with a bristle or a brass brush. Um, so now, next step is to use a 18 millimeter socket with a breaker bar and remove the two bolts in the back here that hold the caliper bracket in place. All right, just remove that. And here's the bracket. And we'll clean up the ends here, but it looks uh, fairly decent. The boots look good. Uh, and once they're cleaned up, they'll look even better. The rotor came right off. It is a little rusted, but uh, apart from that, there are some grooves on it, but not uh, significant ones. It looks to be decent. No excessive play here. And uh, as you can tell in this truck, there's no oil leakage, so that's all good as well. Just gonna spray some uh, soapy water onto the area now that I have better access to it. Just make sure everything is nice and clean. Now this area here, pay particular attention to, it is rusted. And what I'm going to do is after I've cleaned it with a little bit of water, I'm going to take a brass brush to it. And if merited, I will take a, a wheel to it in case uh, it's too rough. But right now, it seems pretty smooth. Seems pretty smooth. So, clean these threads off. If you zoom in here, we can tell there is rust buildup. So I'm just using the bristle brush to just uh, smooth it out and make sure there, there there's no areas that will make the uh, rotor un uh, sit unevenly onto the surface here. It does a pretty decent job, but if I find that it's got some significant rough areas, I will use a, a wire wheel brush, a brass wire wheel brush to get rid of that area, or that rough area. And then I'm finding there is some roughness here, so I might need to use that brass wheel brush. I'm just going to use this. As you can see, I used the brass bristle wheel and I've cleaned around the edge and now it's all uh, smooth. There's no issues with the rotor lying flat on it. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to clean this area here. Uh, make sure that the bolts uh, sit flush with the area and the caliper bracket has no issues with uh, uh, sitting there. There's a bit of a ridge here, and that's why I want to make sure that that's nice and clean there. These areas have been cleaned on both sides. All right, so I'm going to clean this rubber grommet and uh, this uh, area here with the wire wheel. Okay, so cleans it right up. All right, we're just gonna clean up the caliper bracket bolts. Make sure they're nice and clean, the threads are nice and clean. We will be putting thread locker on these bolts, so that's why I wanna make sure that they're nice and clean. All right, so we'll be putting on the new rotor now and this is brand new. As you can tell, there's a bit of a um, honing on the rotor, so that will improve the gripping strength of the pads on the, the new rotors. So we're just gonna clean it now. And wipe it down. We'll also be wiping it one last time before we put 
the uh, caliper and pads back on. But this will just be an initial clean to clean off the oils that prevent it from rusting. All right, so I've cleaned off the rotor. I'm just gonna put it aside on a clean surface for now. I'm gonna put some anti-seize uh, compound on this area here and on the inside of the rotor to prevent any future uh, rusting. You don't need very much. I'm just gonna put a very thin layer on here. All right, we've put a thin layer of anti-seize copper uh, coating onto this area here and we're just going to do the same to the inside of the rotor. Okay, as you can see I've uh, put a nice thin coat of anti-seize copper coating onto the inside of the rotor as well and this uh, part is also coated. I'm just going to put the new rotor And just to keep it in position, I'm just going to put a wheel lug on so that it doesn't move around too much while I'm installing the caliper bracket. Okay, now before I put the caliper bracket on, I'm just going to clean up the ends where the anti-rattle brackets are going to be positioned. They're not very dirty, but I'm just going to make sure that they're nicely cleaned. All right, so I've uh, just used a brass bristle brush and I've cleaned the areas where the anti-vibration brackets are going to sit, so they're nice and clean. And now we're going to put uh, a coat of uh, silicone on this edge before we put the brackets on. All right, I've just put a, a very thin film of silicone onto the areas. You do not want this to be thick. In fact, I'm going to take off a little because I think it's a little too much. Once you've removed any excess, I'm just going to use a towel. The reason why you don't want excess silicone is sometimes if there's too much it can run off and embed itself into the pads and affect the friction. This is good enough. So I'm going to reposition the caliper back on top of the rotor and what I've done is I've put thread locker onto the caliper bracket bolts. I'm just going to hand tighten it initially. Okay, we're going to torque this to 81 foot-pounds. And this will be on the screen as well. There we go. All right, now with the caliper back on, Fasten tightly. I'm going to put the anti vibration brackets on. And before I do that, I'm just going to compare them to the old ones. These are the old ones, and these are the new ones. And as you can tell, they're exactly the same. There is a notch in the old ones that isn't apparent in the new ones, but I don't think that's material. The next step is to clean the bolts that uh, go into the caliper and make sure they're nice and clean because we'll be recoating them with silicone. And note that we'll be recoating only the slider pin part, not the threads themselves. All right. That's been cleaned, and the smaller one's going to be cleaned too, or as you can recall, the thicker one goes on top. Now what I like to do 
is place a liberal coat of silicone on the slider pin. And also I like to put some on the rubber boot as well. And this helps preserve the boot's integrity. Makes them last longer. I'm gonna put them on liberally for now, but like I said, with regard to the caliper brackets, um, this is not something that we want c potentially coming and smearing on the the new pads. So I'm putting it on liberally now, but what's, a, what's going to happen is I'm going to wipe off any excess. I'll be doing the same, meaning I'll be putting silicone onto the cover of the uh, bleeder valve as well, but that'll come later once the caliper is back on. While the, brack the caliper is not on, I'm just going to take this opportunity to slide the s sliding pins back and forth into the caliper bracket to make sure that they f slide freely. and uh, put more silicone into them as needed so that there's this one sliding really free Oop. okay i'm going to add more silicone to that one. Now I've just cleaned out the actual debris from inside so that the sliding pins do slide a lot better. The bottom one was a little bit sticky but that is because it's got a, uh, a full uh, boot as opposed to a partial boot on the top, uh, top portion. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put in the uh, new brake pads and after that I'll uh, put in the caliper. As you can see, uh, as a point of comparison with the new pads and the old pads, uh, the new pads obviously have a significant amount of uh, material left on them. And well, perhaps this side, this side is not uh, as needful of uh, replacement of brake pads. The other side, maybe, because the they were squeaking. All right, I got a little bit of my uh, dirt onto the brake pad, so I'm just going to use some soapy water to remove it. Uh, do not use brake clean because that does deteriorate brake pads. There, that's all cleaned off now. But do not leave the, the grease on the brake pad because that will affect a braking performance. All right, I've uh, put in the outboard pad and I'm just installing the inboard pad. Remember that the indicator are always on the top. All right. I've taken the caliper uh, from the wire that was holding it up and now I'm going to be positioning it on top of the pads making sure that the rubber boots are positioned beneath it. And there you go. Now as I said the, um, the larger of the two slider pin goes on top. I'm just going to add a little bit of extra silicone to it before I position it into the boot. I don't want any silicone on the threads themselves, so I'm going to wipe that off and push that in. And again, with the pin on the bottom, I'm going to liberally coat it with silicone paste. and place it inside, wiggling it through to, to the boot. There we go. Okay, I'm just gonna hand tighten it initially. All right, uh, just hand tightening it, it's a little bit hard, so I'm gonna use a socket wrench.
Okay, I'm just gonna tighten it till it's ended and then I'll be torquing it. Okay, so I made it snug and now I'm just gonna torque it. And you would torque this to 27 foot-pounds. And it's a 14 millimeter socket that you would use. All right, and as you can tell, the brake line is in the same position that it was previously. And as a last measure, I'm just gonna clean the brake bleeder cap. I'm going to remove it. Clean the brake bleeder. And this is a 10 millimeter. I'm just gonna crack it open and shut it once again. And close it right away. As you can tell, the caliper moves freely. And now that I've broken and re-tightened the, um, the bleeder valve, I can put the cap back on. And as I mentioned before, I'm just going to put a little bit of silicone paste on that too, just to make sure that it maintains its flexibility over time. But I'm not going to put too much, just enough just to coat it. There we go. Just going to take some of the excess silicone off of the boot here. And there we go. Now as one last measure, I'm going to spray some brake clean, brake clean on a tissue and it's going to clean the rotor one last time. And this just gives it an extra measure of cleanliness in case my hand dirtied any bit of it while I was installing the caliper or the brake pads. All right, I'm gonna remove the lug nut that I had installed temporarily. I'm just gonna clean off the threads a little. All right and your brake job is now complete. What we are going to do next is uh, straighten the wheel, put the uh, wheel back on, and uh, uh, tighten the lug nuts in a star pattern. Um, after that, go on to the next side, which will be the left side of the uh, vehicle. And once that side is done, um, tighten the lug nuts, hand tighten them um, until they're snug and then bring the vehicle down and tighten them, torque them to the appropriate torque, which is uh, 103 foot-pounds for the Saturn SL2. And we'll put the wheel on now after I've cleaned up this area. Okay, and now we're gonna put the wheel back on. I did do one last clean of the rotor just to make double sure that it uh, wasn't contaminated in any way. And uh, put the wheel on, put one of the lug nuts on just to snug it up. Put the one across from it on. So now the wheel is a little bit even. And now, just to, to reiterate, all we're doing here is simply snugging the lugs on. Once the vehicle is back on the ground, we'll be torquing it to the correct torque specification.
and when we do torque it to the necessary specifications, we'll be using a star pattern, which would be like so. Right now it's just so loose, we're not going to do that. Just make it even. All right, so we've uh, lowered the vehicle, taken the jack stand out and the, the wheel chocks out. And now we're just going to tighten the wheel 103 foot pounds. I'm going to do so now. And again, the star pattern. Hundred and three. Hundred and three. Hundred and three. There we go. Now we're just gonna put the hubcap back on. Again, you don't need to use any aggressive torque on that. Okay, and you just Tighten it, hand tighten is fine. There you go. After you've brought down the vehicle, press the brake pedal a few times, just pump it so that the um, brake fluid, if uh, it has run itself up into the master cylinder, runs back down. And after you pump the brake, uh, go into the uh, engine compartment area and just check the brake fluid. And we'll do that now. The master brake cylinder is located on the driver's side or the left side of the engine compartment area. And what I like to do is use a strong light and then you can see the fluid levels. Fluid levels are right there, and that's perfect. But you can also tell from here that the fluid color of the brake fluid is a little bit of a brownish tinge. That means that the flu brake fluid is dirty, therefore we'll do a uh, brake fluid flush video next to clean this fluid and make it clear again. Thanks for watching, and I hope this video was informative and it helped you save some money. I know it saved me some money. And uh, make sure that you click below in the description for the free downloadable PDF which will show you the specific tools and um, explicit instructions on how to do this repair on your own. Um, see you again next time.